Hello learners, this is Pradeep Nayak here, CEO of Fuel India. I welcome you all to another exciting session of event industry. And today we're going to talk about equipments in event industry. There are many equipments that are used in the event industry to put a show together to give you a wow effect. When we see an event, it's a wholesome experience. But there are many categories and there are many elements of these equipments which are in sync to deliver something that is expected by the client that is expected as a part of the show. So how we put together, what are those equipments? Well, there will be more than 100 plus equipments in each and every event, but I've divided them into four main categories. And I will just run through the main elements of these categories, because if I start discussing each and every small elements, then I'm sure one session would not be enough. You will be able to experience this as a part of your practical exposure while you're doing events, while you are a part of uh, the console team looking at the sound or where you're part of the back end stage where you're looking at the lights, etc. So you will gain more experience, more information and uh, details of each and every element that has been used in the event as you experience events. However, as event managers, there are a few basics that we are supposed to know and that's what I'm uh, doing it today. So I will quickly run through those main categories and the elements under these main categories with some pictorial representation for you to understand it easily. Allow me to show you the presentation. These are the different types of events. And if you see, uh, the first image is an award show. The second image is a conference. The third one is an exposition. Um, the fourth one is a concert. The fifth one is a fashion show. The sixth one is a mall activation uh, that's happening in a mall. Now, if you see, there are these are different types of events or different categories of events that are happening. And there are different elements that are used here to put this together. Well, there could be a lot of uh, elements which is very common. I would say, like, for example, lights and sound, it's very common. It's same or it would be uh, different in terms of the number of people who are attending or people who are viewing those events. Those things can change. But there are a few elements which are very, very common amongst all the six element, uh, event types put together. So the main category of equipments, first one is sound equipments, second one is lighting equipments, third one is audiovisual equipments, the fourth one is trussing and scaffolding, and the fifth one, last but not the least, is recording equipments. Each and every category we uh, plays its own important role in the show. Um, as we go into detail, you will be able to analyze it and understand as to how each and every element plays its own role. So first, let's talk about sound equipments. The first image that you see are different kinds of speaker. Now, what I'm showing you is a one particular brand and there are different varieties of speakers. Now, depending upon the number of people, depending upon the size of the event, depending upon whether it is an indoor event or it's an outdoor event, what is the purpose of the event? If it is a conference where the vocal is more important or if it's a dance show, anything. So the brief from the client or the understanding of the brief by the event agency has to be in detail. Based on that, the event agency or the operations department from the event agency will be able to suggest a suitable sound that is required for an event. Now, if you're talking about, for example, if I'm talking about a hundred packs conference, a conference for hundred people, then I know if there, and again, I have to get some more clarity from the client saying that, is it only vocal? Is it only conference? Or is there, is there an option of playing some videos uh, or some uh, music it will be part of the presentation? So we have to be very, very clear because if it is only vocal, then just the tops, top speakers will do. But if there is some uh, music, there are some videos to be played, then the bass is also required. And again, we have to ask questions like, is it happening indoor? Is it outdoor? Do we have enough space to place the uh, bass, the music speakers? So there is a list of questions that you have to ask the client or understand uh, from an operations perspective when you're planning the equipments for an event. So these are different types of equipments in terms of sound. Um, there are uh, like the top speakers, the bass, there is delay, delay in the sense uh, when we do an event in a bigger hall, when there are more than 1,000, 1,500 people, uh, near the stage you will see a set of uh, sound speakers, but the same might not reach out to the uh, person sitting in the last row. So what we do is we set up another set of speakers 
halfway through the hall. When we finish around 500 number of people seating, then we put another set of sounds so that another 500 people or till the last row the sound is uh, heard or the or, you know the person who's speaking is heard clearly. So these are delay speakers. Then there are monitors or they are called a stage monitors. These are used for the per person who's performing on the stage or talking on the stage. For example, there is a person giving out a speech on the stage and the speakers are facing towards the audience. So what is happening is that he is not able to understand as to what he is saying clearly and also most of the times it is used during musical performances or during band performances. The um, artist has to listen to what he is playing. Only then he will be able to improvise or uh, you know work upon it further. So there is always a monitor that is for the artist on the stage and then the speakers which is for the audience. So there are different varieties. I'm sure as a part of your uh, session during production, you'll be able to go into detail. But yeah, the easiest exposure for you on this is when you become a part of an event and uh, when you are able to um, see what exactly happens and each of this uh, do uh, play their role. On the right hand side, you see uh, different types of mic. Now every mic has its own purpose. So initially when the event industry started, there was always a cord. So it used to be placed on a stand. So they were always connected. The cordless came much, much later. So we had uh, cord mics, uh, then we had cordless mics, and then we came up with collar mics. And uh, today we have many other, like for, uh, for example, if there is a theater performance, we have mics that hang from the ceiling, which capture a lot of sound that is there because during theater performance, it is not an individual uh, sound that is required. We require the sound of the entire set. So there are different speakers for it. There's collar mic, which is normally like uh, the one uh, you see the, in, the, in the image uh, with next to a battery. So these are something that is clipped on, like the one that I'm wearing. These are called collar mics, uh, mostly used for the speaker so that their hands are free. Um, they can use it to express it well or can be used for a slight changer or anything for that matter. Cordless hand mics uh, are used by the MCs or it could be a lot of people feel comfortable using mic. A lot of singers use it. And uh, nowadays what has happened is that cord mics have kind of done, like they are not hardly used um, as long as it is a sit down uh, uh, performance. But mostly people are using cordless mics. And if it's a singer who needs it on a stand, then it will be placed on a stand, but it's still cordless mic. So there are different types of mics. Uh, all these mics are uh, connected to a particular frequency, which is kept at the console. And based on the frequency they catch and they uh, emit the sound that is required. So as I uh, mentioned a uh, little before that um, you will have to experience it to understand it better. This is just for your understanding as to what each of these elements are. Next, this is where the heart and soul of uh, the event stand. This is the console area and the, what you're seeing is the mixer for sound. So it would vary from the type of uh, events that we do. Now what you're seeing on the left hand side, the first image is a 64 channel mixer. So when we are doing shows where there are more than 15, 20 cordless hand mics used, where different speakers are used, a lot of things that are happening on the stage, different types of music is taken. Then we use a big mixer that is a 64 channel or a 128 channel mixer. But if it's a small show, if it's only two speakers on the stage and uh, a very uh, less use of equipment, then we will go for an 8 channel mixer or a 16 channel mixer or, or a 32 channel mixer. So based on it, so if it's a band performance, there are multiple brands performing and there are 20, 30 speakers coming on stage, everybody wants, uh, if it's a panel discussion, uh, so just to keep uh, th that there is time saved and everything, so we use a bigger mixer. So mixer, there are um, a lot of uh, uh, technical people, they are known as uh, sound engineers who know how this works. Today things have changed, uh, there is a lot of touch based sound mixes that have come, come and also there are preset. Uh, so what happens is that based on each and every artist. So before an artist performs on a stage, there is a sound rehearsal that happens. And uh, when they do the sound rehearsal, they set the, uh, you know, the sound uh, requirement of each and every artist at that point of time during the rehearsal and they map it and they save it on those computers. Today we have uh, advanced technology in this. So they save it and then uh, when the show goes live, it is all saved and it automatically takes. So you don't have to waste time checking and uh, adjusting your sound in front of the audience before, at the time of show. So all these things would have already been done at the time of rehearsals. So things have advanced and there are uh, like if you're really passionate about sound alone, there's a lot of scope that you can you know, uh, gain here. You can uh, do a specialization in sound engineering and you can only manage that.
when we um, work with bigger artists we have uh, bigger artists like for example we work with zakir hussain and many other artists they have their own sound engineer who knows how these artists would require sound and they so like we set up the entire console the sound mixer etc and the sound engineer from the artist would come and take it over and he takes care of the entire show so this is pretty much giving you an heads up on uh, sound equipment these are the main equipments that you should know uh, as an event manager but as I, again i time and again i mentioned that the best exposure is when you are a part of this uh, doing events in the event uh, scene the next category is lighting of equipment so in lighting what happens is that there are plenty of uh, options but these are uh, basic and something which is there in every event which you can add many other elements in this equipment but these are basics and you would see this in most of the search so if you have been to any of the event you have to, you have to just look up look up to the truss and you will be able to see most of these elements used so the first one that you see is a fog machine so fog machine as you see and the name goes uh, it is about creating fog or creating that foggy effect in this stage uh, while one artist comes or if there is a special launch if there is a car launch that is happening or if there is uh, an artist who's coming if there is a dance performance that needs a foggy effect so these fog machines are used these are filled with some uh, liquid uh, fog demystifier which is filled inside uh, the machine and it can uh, remotely control or it can be controlled to a wire from the console so the entire show runs from a console a console is created a technical console in which a lighting mixer a lighting person a lighting engineer sits there a sound engineer sits there and an av engineer sits there they all manage the show along with the event manager or the technical person from the event company who's sitting there and managing the show as per their schedule so fog machine it can be operated both through manual and technical the second one is LED power light. One of the widely and the highest used equipment in lighting is LED power light. If you're doing a small stall display, if you have small backdrop, if you have a big event, a small show, any kind of show that you have, you will find this element come whatsoever. Whether it is just two of this used or hundreds of this uh, LED power light used, but this is something that is used in each and every event that I have seen. The third one, what we see, so uh, before I go on to the third one, so LED power light, so initially what used to happen is power cans used to come, uh, they're a little big one, and uh, they used to put a film in front of it, uh, based on the color that you want. So you want a yellow color, you put a yellow film, you want red color, you put a yellow, uh, red film, you want a blue color, you put a blue film, and those were halogen kind of a setup and used to consume a lot of light. Well, technology, uh, as you see, advances every day by day as we speak. So then came the LED power light, well, if you see the small bulbs there, so right behind this LED power light is a small button through which you can set and you can work up to 130 different types of colors that you can emit with just the purse of a button. And if this is connected to the lighting mixer with just few buttons that you control there, you can change the entire look of uh, the stage or the backdrop in, in a matter of few seconds and uh, they can convert into any color. So that's the beauty of technology is that it advances every year and uh, it becomes even more convenient for us to use it and even more optional to use it. The third one we're talking about is follow spot. So you might have, uh, if anybody has uh, experienced uh, fashion show, so um, big sh fashion shows or if there is a solo speaker a stage kind of a setup or if there is um, a car that is entering uh, into the show at the time of product launch or there is a speaker who's coming out, uh, you know, breaking the screen and coming. So follow spot is a circle that creates uh, where we dim the entire light of the venue and just focus, or the, as we say, it creates a spot. Focus on the person who's performing or performer who's talking or anything for that matter. Uh, used for fashion shows also, the main purpose is to uh, highlight one particular object or a person and take, uh, like bring the attention of people to that particular point and automatically demystify the rest. So that's the purpose of follow spot. Well, there are many things that are manual, again, remote controlled, so multiple ways. Mostly it is used manual because it has to be controlled by a person. So this is, uh, and they're situated right behind the console most of the times and in the center of the stage. So that is one. Um, the next one is profile lights. So profile lights is something that is fixed onto the, uh, you know, the T-stands or the truss or wherever or the option is, uh, purely focusing or highlighting the speaker or the performer. It gives you a combination of a white and yellow light uh, so that it stands out well, the photographs come out well, the speaker or the performer or the person is actually seen very clearly so that is the main purpose of profile light again so if there are six panelists sitting on the stage 
I will have six profile lights, each profile light focusing on one panelist so that uh, it's covered well, it's lit well, and the person can be seen well. So each and every element that we use in lighting equipments has its own purpose and uh, uh, there is a meaning to it. The next one we see is a moving head also called a Sharpie. So moving head is something as the name goes, it keeps moving, it, re it keeps revolving in all different directions. So it can be used like a Sharpie also with a beam light. Uh, you might have seen in big shows like, a, uh, like Sunburn or any other shows where it creates two big beams or multiple beams uh, at the stage. So this can be kept at the corners of the stage giving you that effect or it can be fixed onto the truss or onto the lighting uh, trussing uh, where it is hanged upside down and it is again remote, uh, remotely controlled all through wire but everything is controlled through the lighting mixer uh, at the console. So the another advantage for this is the, um, the lens from where it is emitting the light. You can uh, customize it based on uh, the logo that you're going to create or the company logo that you have. So a lot of companies, uh, you know, customize it with their logo. So whenever they, the light runs on, on a particular uh, wall or a backdrop, you can see the logo is being created. So that is the beauty of it. Most of the shows, yeah, the second highest used product in terms of lighting is uh, Moving Head or Sharpie. The fourth one that we see here is blinders. These are mostly used uh, during uh, concerts and shows, uh, which is fixed onto the truss facing the audience. As the name goes blinders, it's also known as audience blinder. So um, when the performance is going on the stage, all the lightings are focused on the stage and the audience side is completely dimmed or blacked out so that everybody get to see what is happening on the stage. But when the performance ends and they want to interact, if the artist wants to interact with the audience and he wants to see their faces, so this audience blinder is turned on. It I kind of it is not harsh uh, focusing on a particular audience, but it is throughout the entire audience gets lit up, and uh, the artist can see the uh, audience and uh, talk, interact with them. So that's the uh, beauty and uh, the usage of uh, blinders. So uh, before I come into the uh, next category, so there are another 20, 30 elements uh, of uh, equipments that is used under lighting. There could be LED wash that has been used. Uh, there is even more uh, types of uh, demystifier and fog that have been used, laser light that has been used and many more. So as I mentioned, you might have to experience this event in detail uh, for you to understand how each and every element of uh, the lighting plays its own role. So let's go on to the next third category that is AV equipments. As the name says, it's an audio visual, mostly visual, I would say. Uh, so the initial time, so what happens in an event is that you have a backdrop. The backdrop could be flex or anything, or at times if you have to have something dynamic, you don't want like what happens in a flex backdrop or a cloth backdrop. There's a fixed content, fixed artwork, nothing will change. The entire event, the same thing. But if you want something to change, if you want something to show, you want to show some presentation, some artwork and everything. So the initial thing started off in our industry with projectors. So the projector screen, what you see here, these are ready-made ones, the screen. But there are a few screens that we get which can be mounted as per the artwork. For example, you have a 20 by 8 backdrop and you have a 12 by 8 size of uh, artwork or uh, AV projection that you want to do. So you get the uh, AV projector fabric. You mount it onto that uh, frame and then you have a back projection of the projector short throw or you have front projection. Now, if this backdrop is used on a stage, then they will avoid front projection because as in then when you cross the projector, you will see there's an obstruction. So most of the times they use it at the back. So this is where it started and this was widely used for like good 10, 15, 20 years and slowly it started kind of, uh, you know, uh, dying down there. And uh, hardly, I think, now, nowadays uh, they use projector as long as it, it's a basic event uh, and the projector is already fixed onto the ceiling. Uh, it's happening in a hotel or so, then they use projectors. Otherwise, um, today, everywhere, most of the things you would see is an LED wall. The second image that you see is an LED wall. The beauty of LED wall is that day by day from P6, when I say P6, it's the pixelations, uh, the, uh, the gap between each LED uh, thing which forms that entire thing is like a 0.6 mm so it reduced to 6 to 4 3 3 to 2 today we have p1 which is like um so the what's the difference so when you play a presentation at p6 you can watch it from a very far distance but the smaller elements the text you cannot like there'll be some distortion that will happen but with p1 which is the latest in the market today you can see very close like you if you're just 10 15 feet away from this uh, led wall you can still read the text everything well so it's like more clarity 
So the pixel, uh, the uh, difference between each LED thing that forms the entire thing, the gap reduces as the technology advances. So LED is widely used. I would say today, out of hundred percent of the event that happens, around eighty percent of the event they use LED wall in different forms on different stages. So it depends if tier one is using P one, P two, P three. The tier two that is using uh, P four, P five, P six. Uh, there are LED walls which can be used for outdoors. There is LED mesh that has come today, which is lightweight. LED walls can be hanged from the truss, um, completely giving you clearance at the sea, uh, at the ground level. So there are different varieties of use. There are uh, VJs, they are known as visual jockeys, who will customize the artwork that has to come on LED wall. So it doesn't have to be straight, square, rectangle. So I can use a, uh, use a square thing, use a, a circular artwork in front of it, could be a frame, and just use a circular part and my visual jockey will customize the artwork in such a way that I will see only that circular area. Or you will say, oh my God, is LED wall circular? No, it is actually square or rectangle at the back, but I've used a frame to make it look. So it all depends how we're gonna use it. So if you see the visual here, they're trying to show a landscape, but the way they have positioned it. So this is the part of AGO equipment, and I'm sure uh, when you experience it in person, you will understand it much better. The third thing which has taken off uh, the industry by storm is the projection mapping. What is projection mapping? Again, we are going back to the older technology, which was the projector. Yeah, exactly, projection. But this is a high intensity, high luminous, uh, lumens uh, projector used for outdoor or indoor purposes. But how it works is that there's a technology or a software that is created. Uh, before the creating any kind of artwork in that technology or the software, the entire, so first image that you see is mapping on a surface. Now there is a building, they map the building inch by inch and then loaded their entire framework, the architecture to the software. And then they have created artwork which will run within that boundaries only. And through high projector, it is projected onto that building. And not one projector, they use at least five, 10 such big projectors of, I would say, uh, around 10,000, 20,000 lumens, and then it is projected onto the wall. Everything is combined or synced to one uh, processor, and then this outcome, what you see, is achieved. On the right-hand side, you see that is the building that is in Australia, the famous uh, building of Australia. As soon as we see that, we get to know it's Australia. And you can imagine it's a humongous size, and the entire building is mapped. They have mapped each and every inch of it and have created artwork accordingly and it has been projected. So you might have seen, where is the projector? I'm sure it is on the sea or on the river body. Uh, they have, might have created a truss and it is hanged from there. So it is projected from there. There has to be some source of projection. But that is the beauty today that um, um, with LED wall, what happens is that we are limited to a certain areas and everything. But with projection mapping, that is where the future is that you can project anything and anywhere as long as you have mapped it and every inch and every uh, centimeter is correctly calculated and you create artwork there. This is more lively. This uh, is where the future is heading in terms of events, in terms of creativity. So this is what you will get to experience in, as, uh, in time when you get into the event industry. So uh, these are the three different types of projections or uh, uh, audiovisual uh, experiences uh, that happen. Now let's go to the fourth category. Trussing and scaffolding. Now what is the purpose of truss and scaffolding? So all the lighting that we do on a stage has to go on truss most of the times or else it will go on a um, T-truss or a lighting truss which is kept a little away from the stage, away from the audience. So that is one option. So the main purpose of the truss is to achieve the visual identity of the stage or to uh, make sure the sound and lights are uh, placed on that. Uh, it's like a framework. The first image that you see is scaffolding. So scaffolding can be used for branding. Scaffolding can be used for creating a nice backdrop and having visual elements hang to it. Scaffolding can be used as the third image goes is uh, when we do an outdoor image, we have to hang the uh, light that's called what you're seeing that image uh, is the um, so a line array of sound. So for hanging such things. So scaffolding is used in building construction work also. So it is just that the event guys got a little more creative and started using the same scaffolding with even more strength for event purposes. In the center, what you see is truss. This is a circular and a mix of different types of truss. But normally you see a square truss, a rectangular truss, and truss normally is used to hang sounds and lights or to achieve your visual design of the stage. 
as I said again, and I would repeat, you will be able to judge and understand this more in clarity when you go and be a part of an event personally. So the way you see events from now on is going to be completely different. After me exposing you to all this equipment, the way you visualize, the way you see events is going to be totally different. Um, further, I would suggest when you visit, have make a note and watch these things very, very carefully. The next that I go to is recording equipment. Now recording, I'm sure each and every one uh, today uses a smartphone. A smartphone has a lot of like video and camera options. So you think, why is this important? Yeah, well, a professional uh, recording of equipment of uh, event is very, very important. So it could be for multiple uh, reasons. One is recording the event for you to understand and uh, make a note or use it for marketing purpose at a later stage. Now in recording, the first and foremost thing that has been al always used is the photography. That's a basic thing. Capture the event, but that is more static. So once you capture, it is static. So what happens if you want a dynamic? So then came the videography. So in any event, videographer is there who will put a tripod. He'll place his video camera on that tripod and it is recording whatever is happening on the stage. The second thing what we can also, what we also do is there's an output given, video output from the camera. It is connected to the console and whatever is the speaker for example if we have an event where there are 5000 people and there's only one stage the 5000 the person who's sitting in the end he can't see that uh, speaker who's there the stage will be like there somewhere very far so what we do is the videographer captures it on a very close angle the video output is given and then it is emitted or it is or it is uh, projected on an led wall which is much closer to the 5000 person so halfway to the hall, there's another delay uh, LED projector, LED wall that has been put or a projector that has been put from the console using switcher. The camera captures what is happening on the stage and it gives an output there. So what happens? Everybody there can see. So there has been shows, uh, there has been Coldplay uh, who came to India. There were 40,000 people. So you think the person who's standing in the end can see uh, who, when Coldplay performs? Definitely. He will look like a one small, tiny one element. But that far, you will be the last person in that row will be there. So how do we get to know who's performing in the stage? Is through the delay screens. That is through LED walls that has been created. And the videographer who's capturing that, giving an output to those delays so that you can see who's there on the stage and more clearly. So recording of equipment is used in multiple uh, angles and multiple purpose. And exactly, uh, and what is the purpose? So uh, if you want to show something else on the screen, then you would need things like mixer. The third image that you see at the bottom, you see there's a person uh, is working uh, with the mixer, like there will be different cameras, like a bigger event will have four, five, six cameras, uh, some from drone, some from a Jimmy Jib, some very close angle, some sand still. There are different terminologies that we use and different purpose of the terminologies. So the mixer sits there and controls. So uh, the event has been captured from all five, six cameras. The mixer, the person who's doing the video mixing, based on the instruction that he's got from the event manager or from the client, will exactly project what has to come on the screen and he keeps switching it. At times, I'm sure you would have seen uh, big shows like Filmfare or i5 Awards and everything. You see when a performance happens, there's an angle where you see uh, Shah Rukh Khan performing from the front. Then you see all of a sudden you see Rekha, Mita, uh, Rekha and all the artists in the audience. And then so you that doesn't mean that one camera person is just turning around everywhere. He cannot do that. So there are different cameras. The video mixer switches between different cameras using a switcher. So there is, yeah, as I mentioned, there are many more technical details to it, which you will experience only when in person when you go there and sit again with them. These are different equipments, as I told you, drone camera today has become kind of a mandate with most of the events. Uh, it makes a little bit of noise though. If it's an indoor, it will uh, become a little disturbing, but in outdoors, it works out brilliant. Uh, biggest of the events have been captured. Uh, they use uh, drones to create highlight videos and everything to capture uh, the uh, bird's eye view that uh, an event can get. Uh, that's the beauty of it. And um, as uh, the photographers can be as creative as possible using drone. This, uh, right, the last one that you see is a Jimmy Jib, which is used in movie industry also. It is also used in weddings. It is used in events. It depends upon what. So there will be a Jimmy Jib handler who handles. It's like a crane who handles it. And based on the inputs that he receives on his uh, in-ears uh, from the uh, mixer that would capture this angle, I want this angle. So most of the stage shows will have that. So you will see a lot of times when the artist is performing, uh, 
you might not see the camera, but uh, you will see the angle of the camera. Either art, it is focusing on artists going running behind uh, the trees and everything. So that's a Jimmy Jib, but it's capturing it in different, different angles. So that's the beauty of Jimmy Jib. It is still widely used in the event industry uh, and the movie industry. Um, I would suggest that you guys go and experience this and you'll be able to understand much better. With this, I would uh, come to the end of um, the session called uh, Equipments. So as I mentioned in the beginning also, uh, what I'm showcasing is just the basics of equipments, what an event manager should know uh, before he talks to his technical person. Uh, but it is always good to know each and every detail, each and every function of for these equipments, how they're connected, how they perform. Like under AV, we have switcher, which is a part of it. In sound, we have amplifiers, we have connectors, we have snake cable and so on. So there is, there is no end to it. Um, every day, like for me, it's been 15 years in the industry and every day is a new learning. Every event is a new learning. Every new technology is a new learning. So always keep yourself updated. Uh, make sure uh, you are um, like uh, surrounded with all this kind of information and knowledge. Keep yourself updated. The best way to learn is uh, to be a part of the event. And I wish you all the best. Um, be a part of the event. Observe things differently now since you are a little aware of what happens in the event industry. Thank you all. Have a great day.